tonight. Jeff Riddle uh, is head is uh, SVB sorry, of of this development for Ignite Video. Uh, Um, and uh, I'm going to actually just turn it on over to Jeff and let you tell, talk about it again. through this ridiculous uh, community, uh, music really took off on the platform. And bands came out of everywhere. Everybody was a musician. Everybody knows a guy that plays guitar, and that guy had a band name, and that guy had songs online, and they were terrible. <laughs> and everybody was on MySpace, and everybody was in a band. And the reason I know that, because I too, Fortunately, we had the greatest opportunity to tour the country professionally, selling our music, playing shows, uh, and selling merchandise. But we built our audience using MySpace, and it worked for a very short amount of time. Over time, we started to compete in noise, because everybody was in a band. And we could only connect with the songs that we had, and the picture, the ridiculous picture of us uh, as our profile picture in our bio. And we started to struggle, and eventually we had to give up and hang up the guitars and go back to the world of startups. <laughs> now, for the last 30 years, we've been bombarded in the same way that MySpace was bombarded with noise. And for 30 years, think about the trends that human beings have been going through. Gated communities, caller ID, PO box, tinted window cars, TiVo. These are all technologies and lifestyle choices designed to filter out all the unwanted information. And so naturally, us trying to compete in the noise on MySpace was impossible. But now, a few years later, my friend JB here came along and he changed the game. Because he connected in a whole new way by putting himself on video and on YouTube. And in doing that, he engaged in a completely different experience with the user. And before you know it, he had thousands, and then tens of thousands, and then hundreds of thousands of views. Eventually, Usher found him, and then he signed with Scooter Braun, and now the kid drives Ferraris. <laughs> now here's the thing. The human experience is all through sensory input. We have sight, sound, taste, smell, and kinesthetic touch. Our entire experience is designed through our senses. And if we were to take light waves alone, and we said, this is the spectrum of light waves, we can see about this much of it. And of that, our brain has to process that information against information we've seen in the past. And we're terrible at it. We're terrible at experiencing the world. We see it through our own lens. And so when you try to compete on MySpace, where everything looks the same, it's really tough. You're limited with your senses. But video changed the game for this guy because he, can, he was able to connect with people in many more senses, the sight, the sound, and the kinesthetic touch. And not only was it the music that he got to share, it was himself, the experience, the relationship, and the connection. So here's what we know at Ignite Video. We know that business has moved to the internet. And we know that the internet is moving to video. And for those of you that remember geometry and the transitive property, A equals B and B equals C, in this case, we believe that business is moving to video. Now, we also have seen in the last couple of years, from Comscore, video is converting shoppers to almost 25% more often. It generates 14% more dollars per play, uh, and it's causing shoppers to purchase 15% more quickly. That's just the beginning. Up until now, we haven't had the technology to be able to really engage video in a way that we are doing today. This is only going to increase. But here's what's available to the enterprise. This is, a, this is a, a Google search of Snapchat, the first page of Google, just taking a screenshot, and this is what shows up. <laughs> now, this is what it looks like when you go to click. This is what it looks like when you go to buy. If you're a business and your job is to put food on the table for your child, do you really want to make video and then post it next to this guy? My guess is that you don't. 
So in that video, our focus is on the enterprise. So we're connecting businesses to customers with video. And then tonight's, to, to tonight's discussion, we're doing it from the palm of your hand. So instead of telling you, uh, I'd like to just show you a quick video. To be able to shoot, to be able to edit, to do voiceover, music, transitions, title screens, and then my personal favorite, the storyboard. And the storyboard is powerful because to the enterprise, when you're responsible for your business, you have many hats to wear and you're not a professional videographer. And for most of these businesses, they can't afford the two to $5,000 it costs for a professional videographer. So not only are we going to put the technology in your hand, we're going to baby step you through step-by-step, scene-by-scene with custom storyboards so that you can follow how to make a great video. And so, in addition to that, because business is more than Snapchat and ridiculous videos, you want to know your analytics. You want to know what people are watching, how often they're watching it, how long the video is being watched. That's data that's going to help you make more informed decisions for your marketing as you engage with video online. We're taking it a step further though because just the single solo entrepreneur or small business owner, uh, the enterprise needs something much more advanced than just that individual. So we're taking it a step further and allowing for an enterprise to basically put this app in the hands of all of their clients, or excuse me, all of their employees, and be able to take video of everything that they're doing uh, upload that video right to the cloud, right to a central repository where the enterprise marketing department can actually determine which videos are quality, which videos are not, which videos are approved, which, vid which videos are not, and then post them wherever they want in real time. Now imagine if you're the San Francisco Giants where your entire experience is about entertainment. They, they've got every shot of Buster Posey uh, that you could possibly imagine, but what they don't have is the experience of the audience. And that's the experience that people go and pay all that money to engage with. Imagine putting this app in the hands of every single member who shows up at that game and then asking them to take video in real time, upload it to the cloud, and as the marketing person sitting in the marketing booth, they can approve videos, post them to Twitter, post them to Facebook, put a contest onto the big screen in real time. Now I heard today that San Francisco 49ers, their stadium, and by 20, 2017, the new stadium is going to be able to support every single person in the entire stadium uploading video at the exact same time. That's where we're going. And so that's what we're focused on in the night video. So in two weeks, uh, or excuse me, we're working with some clients. That's fine. In two weeks, we're going to launch our beta. We're just getting started. We're just figuring it out. Uh, but we're really excited to be here tonight and definitely excited to talk to you. And there's a few of my, my team members in the audience. You guys just raise your hand for, for a second. If you guys want to talk about any of this with us, we're super excited about video. We're passionate about it. We want to help the, the enterprise. And we're excited to talk to you. So thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. 
video on the fly and user generated content. Who has a question? Okay, oh, we got one. Let's see, I get to go first. I've got lots of questions, always. I was just interested to see more about the story for tool. And how does that work? Can you elaborate more on that? So, yeah, that's a great question. Um, right now, we have just in our beta, we have just custom storyboards that we're sort of choosing based on the industries that we're targeting. But our goal is similar to like a WordPress where you have WordPress and you download your packages, different material. For every industry, we're going to have custom designed storyboards that each industry can then choose which ones they need and download them like a pack. So you want to do a product, we're going to give you a product video. You want to do different types of product videos, we're going to give you the storyboards. Um, and that's just the beginning. But yeah, our, our intention is not just to put video in your hands. As, a, as an enterprise, our intention is to make it as easy as possible to make the most professional video as possible. Because your options right now are basically nothing or paying videographer, and it's not really a, a feasible option for a lot of people. Um, I'm a filmmaker, or that's my background, so this is super exciting. Um, I think some of me would be threatened, but I think it's awesome. Um, so, but it seems like you're, you're really going for the business angle, which is great for the company. But like, is there a consumer facing, like, will your average Joe be able to use this product? Or is it really meant for um, businesses? Or It's a really great question. Right now, our focus is the, the enterprise, because that's just the wide open market. Mm -hmm. um, we're, as far as we can tell, we're the first to, to, the, to the game. And so we're going to keep going there. That doesn't mean that there's a prosumer option. Uh, that doesn't mean that we want to, we, we don't want to, uh, take down the videographer community, we want to support the videographer community because at the end of the day, if you're a wedding photographer, you know, you can carry all the gear with you or you can do it right from your phone. Mm -hmm. And the camera is the technology that's going that direction. So we just want to be a support structure for the enterprise. I, I think that was a great question. And you know, one of the things that we often get at Transmedia SF is where does user-generated content come into the storyline? And, and so I want to put it back to you, Jeff, because we see things like the, uh, the Goitier, um, someone I used to know video, where someone has actually taken it upon themselves to not do a cease and desist from all these people creating their imitation videos, but looking to monetize it and turning it around. And it seems to me that's the angle that you're taking with enterprise. I mean, you gave the great example of the San Francisco Giants. Um, so are, are you looking at other clients that are looking to utilize this in the same way? Because that's an entertainment company is Salesforce.com and Deloitte. We know these folks are really involved in transmedia planning, are you looking at these levels of enterprise as well? Absolutely. So we're, we're, we have our verticalized approach where we're going after the small businesses and per vertical, but then we have an entire enterprise side as well that's kind of the agency and the big brands like in San Francisco Giants, the entertainment side, and then also the, the, the business side. So Ruben Networks is a client of ours. Um, who I think just did the deal for San Francisco 49ers and putting in the Wi-Fi. But Ruben Networks is using it as an internal training uh, tool because the challenge for them is they're spending I don't like to say the number, but a lot of money on video. And so for them to put this in the hands of their marketing team to go out, film, bring back training content, they can do that in a crowdsourced model, and that's, that's the way that they're utilizing it. So we're, we're still very early, and so we're still looking for those opportunities where this technology, which we primarily, most of our investment has been in the product. We want it to be solid. That's, that's the really the big key for us. And now it's how do we find the right <coughs> companies that uh, find the right opportunities for them. So uh, I'm going to ask another question if, as other people are thinking. I think I see a couple more. Um, you know, so I took a quick look at what you've got. And one of the big problems with UGC is filtering, right? I get a lot of stuff. <laughs> How do I find the good stuff out of that? And so tell me about what you're planning to do for filtering. Well, so for right now, uh, the filter, so the example of the Giants. Um, so Giants put out their proprietary app with us, uh, gets in the hands of their audience. There is a lot of crap out there. Let's be serious. Uh, and so we're putting that in the hands of the marketing team. We're putting that in the hands of the central repository. They have the choice to approve and reject video based on the content. Um, so what we want to do is basically make it easy, put, the, put this in the hands of people who can make great content because it's so easy to do, but then give the marketing team the ability to make those decisions because they know what's best for the company. Does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. Great. Okay, hi. Um, I actually have a question about Snapchat. I was just reading an article today where it says after a set, people to Snapchat, and a hundred people, Taco Bell is on Snapchat. You know, Honda just did this big thing on Twitter and Vine, and a lot of companies are getting onto the Instagram videos. So, how does your company help 
um, all of these businesses get to there? Because that's where they're going right now. Absolutely, it's a great question. It, it depends on the angle that you're, you're approaching it. So they're looking at the social side of it. You have this very viral technology, a seven second video, it's quite brilliant. Uh, it really limits the experience of the user. No one has to engage that much in their time. What we're saying is, that's fine for that side of the coin. What we want to do is put something that provides more content, more quality, uh, really focus on more of the experience so that, you know, our, our main play and our initial play has been, you're a business, you have regular content you need to put out there, you need to engage with your audience via video, we're going to make that easy for you. We're going to make that affordable to you. Then the second play is, okay, well on the enterprise side and some of these bigger brands, there are ways for you to engage. And while Vine and Snapchat, as you saw, Honda's going to be putting videos next to naked women and yeah. all these crazy things. I mean, I did a search on Snapchat and it was the best shots on Snapchat and it showed literally people's bones sticking out of their fingers. And I was like, and I, and I practically fainted. You know, it's like, I don't do well with needles and those things. I mean, it still is haunting me to this day as you know, I was doing this. Uh, that's, that's not where that brand content should be living. Um, that brand content should be hopefully more controlled and more um, thoughtful. And that's where we think we can really be helpful. Is it more about um, you know content creation and post production and measurement and less about um, engagement afterwards? Um, because I mean a lot of these tools are free now too, right? Mm -hmm. I mean you can buy Give It, you can download that for free and sure. you can create it, and you know you could put it in Dropbox and everybody could be sharing it that way, and then you know use iMovie to edit. I mean how is this? Is it streamlining efficiencies? Is that Absolutely, streamlining efficiency. I mean, with Give It, it's more control. We're putting this in more um, opportunity and more creativity to the business owner. I mean, certainly there's the channel, so that's something that we're coming up against. Is okay, great. We we got you this great video. We helped you produce this, but now what? So there is there is sort of it has to be the right user. And I think as we see social continue to catch on, I think it's still very misunderstood what social is designed for. Businesses are still figuring that out. As they start to understand how to use social more effectively and that becomes a useful channel, uh, then this content will become more, for those businesses as they sort of catch up, will become a more useful uh, solution. There's certainly, looks like some businesses are not the right fit for us right now. They're just not there yet. Some of them are, we're starting to realize are. So we just have to kind of pick and choose, but uh, that's kind of how we're thinking about it. That's a great question. Yes, sir. My question is about what I think the service is, and then about what it should be. Sure. <laughs> so, from what I understand, the service is that if I have a product, like I'm a Ferrari dealership, I use the Ignite platform both to easily create videos that would promote our products, and then as a platform to put my video out to ad to advertise. Sure. That's what it, that's what it is, yep. right? Um, what I don't see is the UGC, the user generated content. Like the ideal, what I would think is that it's a tool that's easy to give out to my customers, to my fans at the baseball stadium, and make them all into producers. And then they would have to do, I guess, do some sort of hashtag for the videos they produce so that I would know that they were produced about my product. That's a great question, Ben. So, so uh, maybe I missed the presentation. Are you looking for a job? So, so there's two sides of the coin. There's the side, uh, this gentleman, uh, our side of it, that the gentleman mentioned, produce content, put content out, be able to see, uh, you know, advertise, etc., see your, your analytics. We're also thinking about the other side, which is the UGC side. So the giants would, would uh, engage with us on a separate platform. We're going to build them a custom app. They give that out. But the beauty is that when somebody posts that content, it goes right to the cloud. They can't post it on their social channels. It's actually brought into the Giants organization and they can make the decision what to do with it. So these are two separate potential ideas. I mean, we're, we're so early, we haven't even launched our beta yet. So what we know is we have a great product. We have an enterprise solution to support uh, these organizations that are trying to control um, to, uh, to best question. Is this good content or not? Should this go out? Is this consistent with our brand? And we're still looking for where are those opportunities for us to engage with a, with a client and figure out ways to leverage the technology. So we're still in that kind of discovery phase. We have a great product. That's, that's why I joined the team. I was like, wow, this product is amazing. I can't believe that they built this. Let's go figure out how we can best bring this to the market and then make the adjustments as needed. Great question. We've got a couple questions over here, and, and I think that, that actually is you know, one of the essences of, of why we're bringing this night together is you know, mobile is this staggering force, as I tried to hammer home in my presentation. Uh, and, and now it's becoming uh, mediated. You know, we're getting much more media on, on mobile, and it's changing the face of all of these enterprises. 
uh, from commerce to entertainment to live action and, and to enterprise as well. Thanks, Jeff. I, I think uh, all the feedback, you, you can see that people think this is a great space and you're in a great position. I thought your demo, for our demo, was a little bit lacking in excitement. I sort of, also I didn't get from, from the demo exactly how your product works. So my, my feedback was like, I thought that that can be much cool to be one more exciting because we see Ferrari, and sure. obviously when you want to drive, and there wasn't a drive in the video, so then one and two, I didn't really get from the video how exactly how the product works with the, with the, comp with the manufacturing of the company. Legitimate so I, decide, I, you know, I think there's great feedback on the space, but the, the video I thought was sort of lacking. That was my feedback. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah, other people thought, I thought it was great, but sure. I, didn't, I didn't get a clear picture of what it, how exactly it worked. Yeah, so, so in terms of actually showing you how the app works, we'd be happy to show you afterwards. We have a couple of iPods rolling around in, in iPhones. Um, I would agree. We weren't allowed to go in the cars with people. Uh, there's some legal issues with that. So yeah, we were kind of limited in what we could do with the video. But thanks for, for sharing. Justin Bieber didn't invite you to go ahead no, and talk. No, not this time. <laughs> you know, it's only a matter of time, Jeff. I know it's going to happen. JD's we're we're working on it. Yeah, maybe we can get him as a sponsor. One more. Yes. Uh, my question was just uh, very simply, have you figured out a price for the app yet, or are you pricing it as, a, as an entire service? It's a really great question. Uh, we're, it's too early for me to really say. We're, we're kind of zoning in on some things. We're, right now, our focus has been on the beta. Um, and as we get to the beta point, we're going to be engaging a lot of different clients and test. Um, we want to test with an agency and brand and really see where there's potential for value. Uh, and once we get a better sense of that, we'll know. Um, but we're, we're still early to really be able to determine that. But with that being said, uh, these guys up here in the front, for those of you that are interested in talking to us, we are at a point where we're, we're early and we're excited and we want to work with the right people. Um, so we're really looking for those, those great partnerships. So we encourage you to come talk to us if it makes sense for your business or if you have an idea and you want to explore it, we're definitely willing to do that. Thanks for asking that. I, I can already see some synergies between what you're doing and, and Fabian's company. So I think you guys should talk and Absolutely. we need to talk to Marty later. And, and so, would the um, uh, would the Ignite video uh, folks, Andrew, uh, Paxton, Joe, put your hands up so that folks can come and ask you questions later if, if you have any other questions for Jen here? Oh, oh, yeah. So I think you have a really cool product there. Um, it's just a quick question coming more from the brand space. Is sure. You mentioned brands really need to break through the clutter and you can't be on Snapchat and YouTube and I totally agree with you. There, there's so much out there that it gets really noisy um, and your product does a great job of helping people that aren't necessarily videographers create great videos. Where do those then live so that you can get the return on investment by having consumers see them if it's not YouTube and it's not Snapchat? It's a really great question. So uh, I glossed over some of these things in the interest of time. Uh, we have our enterprise site. Uh, even for a single user, they're going to have their own site to post videos on, and that's where they can pull from that site um, to post these social channels to get that the analytics. Uh, it's useful in a case like a real estate agent who they do property sites already. We're going to have a site where they can share that content, um, you know, put up their their overview of what they're sharing. But that, that's still something that we're we're trying to identify. Where's the best place for us to help get the video out there? Because we all know we need content. We all need, know we need to put it in front of the right people, but you know, success is not just putting out a new video, it's getting it in front of the right people. So that's something that we're actively working on uh, as well. Another question, thanks. Great. I'll stay as late as, that, as I have to talk to anybody that wants to. Um, and my team is here for that exact reason too, so I can get home to my, my lovely lady. But uh, thank you all for your time tonight. Yeah. All right. Thank you.